Hey guys, this is Jeremy here. Remember when I put up that video asking, hey, where's another Lords of the Rings game? It literally seems as though they heard me. Now apparently this was in Game Informer last uh, December, so a month ago, not even that. There's this game that's being made by Monolith, who made the Guardians of Middle-Earth game, and it's called The Shadow of Mordor. Supposedly it's a prequel. So uh, anyway, why don't we watch the video here and... It looks pretty cool. I have to admit, I'm I'm very excited for what it is. Um, it it kind of looks like a cool game. Like the there are a few things like so far. You're apparently you're this ranger character, and this is the Black Gate. This is before everything went bad, you know. Which kind of makes me wonder if uh, if this is supposedly a prequel, and the amount of you know killing you do in this game is true. I do wonder how the story evolves from here. But anyway, here we go. So. Yeah, apparently there's this nemesis system dependent on these uh, whatever you do in the game really f shapes the enemies. Not more so the events around you, it seems, but the enemies themselves as well. And so the the graphics look pretty good, like not too bad. Uh, I keep on thinking it's Assassin's Creed, though. You, you'll see what I mean. Like, see this wall? Like, obviously you can't do a wall climb any different way, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's a. <laughs> it just looks a little bit like a, a creed. I, I thought that was funny how he walked in front of him to stab him, not, you know, go around. Now, this is totally creed here. Now, I see this. Now, this is something called the Wraith Mode. Uh, it's kind of like Eagle Vision from uh, from Assassin's Creed once again. And at first, I didn't, I don't really like the idea of it. Like, this, this guy is able to go into this... I don't know, this spiritual dimensional thing, and he's able to... I don't know, it just seems a little weird from my perspective, because here, here it is. And so you see kind of the skeletal versions. It's basically you're in the world where Bilbo and Frodo go when they're in the... when they have the ring on. It's just basically where the Wraith's true form hides. But I guess, you know, it's a little bit more informative than the uh, Eagle Vision was. And I see, here you go, break out and... Say, this game looks like it's it's definitely as brutal as the War in the North game was, but there's something that's extremely uh, more uh, enticing about it. It uh, it has already more intricacy to its combat within five seconds than all of War Nord War in the North did in its entire game. A bit of a very similar kind of combat style to that of Arkham Asylum so with swords. Uh, but it looks pretty fluid, and it looks like it, I find this is interesting. You know, you you actually I, I don't know really what this is. This is like a supreme counter move, but it's weird because even the amount of damage you do, you still don't kill him. Let's see, but it looks like you got these superpowers, like a little bit. So for people who like using magic as mages and whatnot, so it, it appeals to those. I I find the throwing thing funny. Like I remember the only thing you did in AC was throw people off a roof. Now, see, here's the thing. This is when I thought the Wraith mode was cool. Like, look at that. You can apparently really transpire into the Wraith mode and just by, like, just be, like, a super badass assassin kind of character. And then you shoot him with this shadow step thing. And this is another really cool feature of the game. This is all about the Nemesis mode is its ability to really change the outcomes with like now look at that that's the rhythm you're horrifying so anyway you have a choice here so you can see terrorize assassinate sacrifice or spy you can use the guy to spy on and the enemies terrorize to to you know spread your name and horror or you can use them to assassinate which would kind of help you out in further missions but really i would have terrorize i don't want my name to be feared i'd be like yeah i'm the evil dude so this kind of looks like an interesting feature, definitely, considering it will help you find these other leaders if you were to assassinate them. So this is kind of an interesting feature, again, because I'm really wondering where the world will go. Like, where is the... Cha like, where is the... Uh, what kind of universe is this game? Like, how far... How be much before Lords of the Rings is it? Like, and just when you come to the end of the trailer, you'll... you'll You'll see what I mean when uh, you wonder how the story really is going to end. If this is supposedly a prequel and you cause this much shit, like I don't know. Like we'll we'll figure it out. So now that the game is uh, fast forwarded to this character, uh, the big orc guy that uh, you selected for little Greenie to go after. 
See, now this is another thing that's kind of going to appeal to some people is that you can switch between stealth and and uh, and being a you know just going in with a, like slashing up everyone. I know this is what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is just kill people because I don't know. I suck at stealth. But there is this option that people can be stealthy, which is an interesting feature. And sometimes I don't mind actually trying to be stealthy. I'm still kind of finding it odd that he has two swords. Because if you see right, uh, you see right there. Oh, hang on, go back. So this is the troll. Now this is the cool thing. I guess it's kind of an interesting idea. Is see the blue hand up in the corner? That's your guy. And the right hands are all the other people who are uh, with the or with Orthok. And so you apparently have the ability to basically cause uh, Return of the King uh, anarchy and just cause this entire place to kill each other. Now this is, a, 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 like, see, you can uh, transpire, guys. You don't have, it's not it's not as lengthy as it was. You know, I think it only does for boss guys. And so then this is cool, like, by having, by having, you know, you can use him to assassinate him and people loyal to him will fight with you. Well, if not fight with you, fight for his cause, perhaps. So yeah, this it said only 33% chance of him killing him, right? So he just gets his face absolutely walloped. And it's cool too because like all see this face is all screwed up because you apparently you burnt his face in the beginning of the game. Like you really have an effect on the history and everything you do changes how the game well, just how you face your enemies. Like, that's I think is much more interesting. Like sometimes yeah, sure the events that happen Overall events can be interesting, but when they affect individual characters and they really change the the outcome of the game within that character, it's pretty good. And the fact that this is alpha is even this is awesome. This looks great for alpha. I, I am so excited. Like this is if I had a game that really wanted me to go and get a new uh, next gen system, it would definitely be this. So you know, it's a little glossy here. Obviously, we're still pre-alpha. There's a bit of a, a suit too smooth of a texture. His cloak looks like it's uh, kind of more so, I don't know, rubber rather than actual fabric. And I see we got more uh, uh, powers. I'm wondering how much, is she, like how much of a game changer that will be. Like, can you just spam it? Because I'm seeing the white in the corner, and that thing hasn't gone down, really, so unless they uh, they fix that. This guy, whoever's playing, he really knows how to make it dramatic. Like, look, he's he's at the pe precipice of his health, and he lets that thing go down quite a little ways. And, and the thing that's cool, too, is it's just like, very much like Batman Arkham City. It is not a quick time-based kind of game. But look at this. This is brutal. This is definitely taking War in the North. Like you stab him three times and yeah, just chop off his head just to make sure. Yeah, okay, totally needed to do that. So yeah, that is Shadow of Mordor. Very interesting. I am so excited that literally a like a month after I was going, no, there's no Lords of the Rings games. Now we have one coming, and I and then there's this sh voice at the end. Us, our pawns will be in place, and all Mordor will burn. Again, like, okay, if you're trying, this is what's going to happen. If you're basically going to cause Mordor to go crazy over itself, where do your, where does your story lie? Who do you, like, what do you do in the end? What do you really accomplish? And, well, will you die? It's most likely you will die if this is a prequel, but how on earth are they going to fix this? They're going to work this guy in to the overall Lords of the Rings story i'm still interested to see but anyway guys that's war in the north uh, here's the uh, picture at the end like this is a cool freaking picture i like this this is awesome art so anyway uh maybe we can talk about this more i can't wait to do this is the first time i've ever done this so sorry if i was annoying I, i've never done this before so anyway guys really excited about this game tell me what you guys think and yeah that's it that's shadow of mortar